We're looking at June 12th in Singapore. That hasn't changed. And it's moving along pretty well. So we'll see what happens. 651, let's go to Washington. Check in with ABC News White House correspondent Karen Travers. Karen, good morning. That's quite a lead up music there. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Where are we with this summit? Fill us in on this. I mean, it's canceled as of the president's letter last Thursday, but there are meetings taking place and signs that perhaps it could be rescheduled. But when? That's not clear. The president this morning confirmed reports that a top North Korean official is heading to the U.S. for possible talks. He called it a solid response to his letter from last week. And we do know that there are North Korean and U.S. officials meeting in recent days on the Korean Peninsula in a village in North Korea. That's to go over the diplomatic diplomatic negotiations. Uh, what would a denuclearization deal look like? And I think it's important to really key in on that part of it, because there are big differences right now with what the U.S. would like to see and with what Kim Jong-un would like to see when it comes to him possibly giving up his nuclear weapons. He has said he's interested in that and would be willing to do it. There's a lot of skepticism that he actually follows through. There's also a separate track of meetings happening about logistics and security. But, you know, that's all well and good. They have to have those meetings, of course. But if the diplomatic negotiations go off the tracks, there's no summit. So we'll see, as the president likes to say. We'll see what happens. There's a lot of people out there who are saying that Donald Trump might end up cutting some type of Iran deal with North Korea, which is interesting because if it wasn't good for Iran, and why is it good for North Korea? Yeah, and you know, it depends on what the de the details, of course, are they're going to be. And, and we're, they're not there yet. I mean, they're still at the broader issue of even a timeline of how this could work. The U.S. would like to see all at once, denuclearize, give up everything, and then down the road you get your rewards once it's verified that you've done it. North Korea would like to see what they're calling a phased approach, where they do this, then they get something. They do that, then they get something. Because they're certainly concerned that if they give up everything at once, they lose their security plan. Uh, they lose their leverage to make threats on the world stage, and they're worried of what uh, other allies of the United States might do. So you can kind of see that point. Uh, but that means right there, that's a huge difference of how to approach this. And if you can't agree to the broader issue, getting into the nuts and bolts of it's going to be really difficult. But um, uh, originally it was canceled because they were saying bad things about Mike Pence. And right. I mean, so did they that apologize? That was part of it. That was part of it. Also, there was a threat of, you know, if we don't meet it in negotiating table will meet in a nuclear standoff, was what the North Koreans had said uh, last Wednesday, heading into Thursday, which seemed to be the tipping point for the president. And yes, he wasn't happy with what he had been saying about Pence and what they'd been saying about Bolton, but it was really this heated rhetoric and two threats of a nuclear showdown in a week. So the president cancels. There's also the other angle to this is that the North Koreans went dark last week. They stopped returning phone calls and outreach from the White House and the Trump administration. Administration. They didn't show up for a logistics meeting in Singapore about two weeks ago. So, yes, there could be the, the public pointing to from the president was their angry and fiery rhetoric and the fact that they were making threats. But also there were big concerns that Kim Jong-un was just going to no show heading into June 12th uh, or he would cancel on President Trump. And you can imagine that would not go over very well. Uh, also, Karen Travers, I know uh, it's early and uh, most of the White House hasn't been able to respond, but Donald Trump getting some raised eyebrows over his tweets over the weekend, commercializing mm -hmm. Memorial Day, talking about a 25 percent off sale for mm -hmm. Trump merchandise. A lot of people say that's commercializing the day and uh, very unseemly. Any comments from the White House so far? Not yet. We've asked about that. Uh, that, of course, I think they'll pump us to, uh, bump us to the campaign, but also the president's tweet yesterday, you know, saying that uh, America's fallen service members will be happy with how well the country was doing. There was a lot of pushback that that was politicized a very solemn holiday. The president later went out to Arlington National Cemetery, and there were there was no talk of that in his public remarks. He said uh, that these heroes have died so freedom could live, and that America can't really understand the depth of emotion for the families of the fallen on a day like Memorial Day. Also a lot of talk over the weekend, Karen Travers, about um, illegal immigrants being separated from their children. Uh, thousands of children being left to uh, orphanages and sort of being ripped from their parents. Uh, White House talking about that at all. 
Yeah, there was a, a the HHS was responding to this saying, you know, that this there's two different things happening here. There was a lot of headlines last week about 1500 missing children. Those are not people who have been taken away from a parent who arrived here, but somebody who came as an unaccompanied minor, perhaps, and were then put with sponsor families and that the government wasn't tracking once they were put with family members or close friends as a sponsor here in the U.S. Certainly, there's been a lot of social media buzz about this, though, over the last couple of days. Karen Travers, have a good day. Thanks for checking Thank in. You too.